Hey there and welcome to the second tutorial on show that questions for projectile motion. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. A particle is projected from a point A on a horizontal plane with a speed u meters per second at an angle of theta above the horizontal. It lands on the plane at the point B. Show that AB is equal to u squared sine 2 theta over G. Now do feel free to pause the video and have a go yourself. When you come back, I'll show you an approach to proving this equation. Okay, so here we've drawn a diagram which shows a particle which has been projected from the point A to the point B with a speed of u meters per second at an angle of theta above the horizontal. Now in order to best describe the motion, we're going to split the vector u into two components. The horizontal component of this vector would be u cosine of theta because it contains the angle and the vertical component of this vector would be u sine of theta because it doesn't contain the angle based on the fact that we can see a g in the equation that we're trying to prove we're going to show that the acceleration acting downwards due to gravity is g meters per second per second now seeing as we have a b in the equation we're trying to prove we're going to label the length a b in this diagram which is simply the length between the two points a and b okay now in the previous tutorial what we did to solve these types of problems is we picked the point along the trajectory of the particle and we chose to model this point by using SUVA equations to prove the given equation. However, in this tutorial, we're going to be using a variation of the common SUVA equations that you're used to working with. And we're going to be using these parametric equations. And there are also general equations that describe the horizontal and vertical motion of a projectile. Now you'll find that these types of equations are actually much easier to recall than the Cartesian equations of projectiles that you learned in a previous tutorial. And that's because they come directly from the SUVA equations that you're used to working with. Okay? Equation 1 comes directly from the only equation we use for horizontal motion, S is equal to UT, where instead of S we have X to represent the horizontal displacement, and instead of U we have u cosine theta, which we can generalize to be the initial velocity of any particle that's been projected with a speed of u at an angle of theta to the horizontal. Equation two comes directly from another common equation that you're used to working with for the vertical motion of a particle. S is equal to ut plus half a t squared, where this time, instead of s, we use y to represent the vertical displacement of the particle instead of u we have u sine of theta which again is a term used to generalize the initial velocity in the vertical direction for any particle that's projected with the speed of u at an angle of theta to the horizontal okay and in general you'll see that the constant acceleration due to gravity used instead of a is normally minus g if we choose the downwards direction to be negative in the scenario. So you could almost look at these as ready-made SUVAT equations which already have the variables and constant terms built in. Now there are other general equations that you could form from some of the other SUVAT equations but you'll find that these come up quite a lot because what they're trying to test is your understanding of how to combine the equations for horizontal and vertical motion using the common scalar quantity t. Okay, so looking at the trajectory of this particle, I'm going to choose to model the particle at the point B, where the particle lands. Reason being is because at the point B, I know the horizontal displacement of the particle. It's the length AB, which is part of the equation we're trying to prove. So we now need to choose the direction of motion that we need to consider. And we can find clues by looking at the equation that we've been asked to prove. So looking at this equation, we can see that we have a sine two theta, which is equivalent to two sine theta, cosine theta. 
Now, by looking at the diagram, we could see that sine theta and cosine theta are both components of horizontal and vertical motion. So it makes sense for us to consider both directions of motion. So let's have a look at the horizontal motion of this particle first. Okay, so resolving the motion of the particle horizontally at the point B where we take rightwards to be positive, using equation one, the equation we're using for horizontal motion, well, x is equal to AB, as we said, the horizontal displacement was equal to AB. U cosine theta, well, we don't have a value for U cosine theta. Now the particle land at the point B at some time, which we don't know. So we can call that time equal to big T, okay? So subbing these terms into equation one, we get that AB is equal to U cosine theta times T. So we now have an expression for AB, however, it doesn't quite look like what we've been asked to prove. So perhaps if we now resolve the motion vertically, we might be able to find an expression for T, which is the same T as this one. And once we've found that expression, we can substitute back into this equation to see if this proves our result. So resolving the motion of the particle vertically at the point B where we take upwards to be positive, if we use equation two, the general equation for vertical motion, well, the value of Y would be equal to zero at the point B. And that's because in a vertical sense, the particle is projected from the point A, it goes upwards, and then it comes back down to the point B, which is at the same level as A, the initial point of projection. Alternatively, you could look at the point A as the origin of an XY coordinate axis and you ask what's the Y coordinate of B? Well, hopefully you can see that the Y coordinate of B would be zero, okay? Looking at U sine theta, well, we don't have a value for this. Now, as we said, T, the time of flight, is the same in both the horizontal motion and the vertical motion. So we'll say that T is equal to big T as well. And so subbing these terms into equation two, we get that zero is equal to u sine of theta times t minus a half gt squared. Now we can solve this equation to find t by noticing that there's a common factor of t in both terms. And so we can factorize the right hand side, giving us that zero is equal to t times u sine of theta minus a half gt, and therefore, t is either equal to zero or u sine of theta minus a half gt is equal to zero. Now we can immediately exclude this value of t because we know that t equals to zero is at the initial point of projection, a and not b. So we need to solve this equation, which we can do by adding a half gt to both sides to get that u sine of theta is equal to a half gt. Multiplying 2 by both sides, we get that 2 u sine of theta is equal to gt. And if we divide both sides by g, we get that t is equal to 2 u sine of theta over g. Okay, so by considering the vertical motion of the particle, we've been able to find an expression for t, which we can now substitute back into equation 3 to give us that ab is equal to u cosine of theta times 2u sine theta over g. Multiplying terms on the right hand side, we get that ab is equal to u squared times 2 sine theta cosine theta over g. And as we know that this identity is equivalent to sine of 2 theta, we get that ab is equal to u squared sine 2 theta over g, which proves our result. Okay. So, hope that was useful for you. Do join us in the next tutorial where we'll be going through a question where particles collide. Until then, keep up the good work and I'll see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.